What's up, you podcast addicts? Welcome to the Failsafe Weekly Podcast. Joining me, my co-host, Eric Konetsny, a.k.a. Konasty FPV, and Steel Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Steel. I'll be your host here, Ruben Hadagi. Uh, and I hope you have some clean chonies on. It's going to be a gnarly ride. Now, let's get on with the show. Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Greetings, Steel. Can you hear us? All the way over uh. there. So CNN reporting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm fucking here. Let's go. <laughs> How's some butthead over here before the before the internet cuts out on us? So so give us an update. Where are you at? Uh, right now I'm in uh t- what Tiran, 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 Turin. Tiran? I'm in Where's Turin, Turin, Italy. Okay. Oh, you're in Italy. You're still yeah. in Italy. Yep. So I just Don't got here. Did you guys this have to get to Rome or something like that? <laughs> yeah, we got a whole like day to get there. Apparently, we're gonna get there tomorrow at. Uh, we get on a bus. That's a ten-hour bus ride. We get on that at ten o'clock at night and ride the bus overnight. Get there at seven forty-five in the morning, and then we hang out in Rome for four hours, and then we go to get on our plane, and then it's like what eight-hour flight back or something. Back back where? Back home. We oh. leave tomorrow. Oh shit. That's- or not Wait, tomorrow. you're going there and then you're getting right on a plane and you're coming home? Yes. Dude, that's crazy. I feel like you guys are like on the amazing race or something. Yeah. Yeah, we keep uh we keep like freaking out and traveling all over the place trying to get to places that aren't uh well, that aren't going to cost us a lot of money. <laughs> Cuz I mean, obviously we're trying to do this budget thing, but it's not necessarily working out. I think a lot of the uh, quit fucking making faces. Everyone is making faces at me. Everyone is making faces. I can't even. Uh, I can't even keep up to. Can't concentrate can't right now. Yeah, yeah. What time is it? It's like one thirty-three here. Oh, it's um, three. No, four thirty-three here. Yeah, it's definitely one thirty in the morning here. So, let me give you a rundown of the last time. So, I guess the last time we spoke, uh, or last time you guys heard, was I was in Ireland and I was at the uh, Thorax Race Shed, which was a a dude named Keith that freaking let us come into his ha- home and stayed with him and we hung out there for like two days right oh, and then cool. right after that we went to England so we got on a ferry we barely freaking made that thing literally Ooh. like rolled up on the thing as it was floating away oh, the guy was shit. untying the knots like as we were getting on uh, is, it, we got is that, on that the one uh, where, where Drew ate shit Yes, that's when he, he died. <laughs> if you guys aren't like not keeping up with all this stuff, you can check it out on Drew and Mai's channel. Like we've been doing I, videos I saw as that. we're going. So yeah, Drew is Ladrib. Drew and Ladrib. Ladrib and I have been traveling from Ireland, uh, Dublin, Ireland, all the way to Rome, and we're almost done with our trip. So we will be done on the sixth, and it is currently one thirty a.m. on the fifth. So technically, I have one full day left here in uh, Turin which is in northern Italy, which we just got here today. So let me finish. Let me run up the uh, the thing from the beginning. So we left Ireland. We got on a boat, a little ferry thing, took that to England. We got off of England in Hollyhead, which is like northwestern England. Um, a guy named Jay and a guy named Clinton picked us up from the boat ferry place. Uh, we then drove from there to... I don't even know where we went. We went some some location but it was kind of rainy so we ended up not doing that and we went and met up with tom smith so we met up with tom smith at this place uh like quadcopters.uk.co or something like that oh uh, yeah, yeah. i've heard of that yeah place. so they have like a racetrack and stuff going on in the back of their place um and tom smith works there which if you guys don't know who tom smith is he's basically the really badass pilot from the UK that uh, you've been li- you've been living under a fucking rock if you don't know where he, who he is. Yeah, right? Tom Smith is the he's the baller. He's the tatted out dude from I uh, wonder oh, with Liverpoolian accent. He's got just all over the place like on his videos. He's freaking hilarious. I'm I'm um, living under so, a rock. I, I didn't know until I started watching your guys' feed. Yeah, no, you need to check him out. He's <laughs> sick. Um, yeah, he's hilarious too. So. Anyway, did you so see his up. mythical creature? <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. He had the mythical creature with him. So we ended up meeting up with him. We hung out with the dudes at the quadcopter.uk.co. Um, 
And then that evening we hung out with uh, Richard Whelan, which is a HPI guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we hung out with HPI guy. He actually let us stay at his house that night. We slept in his man cave. So all four of us had blow-up mattresses <laughs> and, like, baby sleeping bags, <laughs> literally, like, s- like tiny, tiny baby sleeping bags. Hot they box were in for it. children <laughs> that were, were not fully pubertized yet. <laughs> Uh, do, do, you like guys get, do you guys get any? Uh, one and I, do you guys get any Dutch go ovens going on in there? Dude, it was uh, <laughs> it was fucking fierce. Like, I will say Yo, that I am not a very tall or very large person. I'm like 120 pounds, five foot eight, and this thing came up to my belly button. <laughs> the sleeping bag came up to my belly button, and like I got in it like uh, a sleeping bag. So I'm like hopping around in it like a bean, you know, the little. Uh, like set, a bean sack? They, the potato sack race, you know? Or potato sack, yeah. Like, I'm in there, and I can't even move my ankles. They're just locked because it was so <laughs> tight. But it was so cold. Uh, I was not expecting it to be cold in northern uh, Europe. I don't know why. Summertime, I assumed it would be, like, shorts weather. Not. It was definitely, like, in the 50s, which for people that know Celsius, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know Celsius. That, it was cold, okay? <laughs> it was long pants, sweater, jacket weather. Make your nipples hard. Yes. So we ended up sleeping there. But before we actually slept at Richard's house, we went into this place. It was called Ghetto Golf. Um, and it's in Liverpool. And, uh, yeah, it was basically a large indoor golf place, like putt-putt. And <laughs> it had all kinds of, like, just janky action going on. So they would have, like, a toilet as a as a hole for one. And you'd have to hit it through all these weird – it was, like, super gnarly putt-putt, but it was indoors. And, yeah, it was super cool. We went and played that with all the dudes, local dudes <laughs> there. Um, yeah, and then we spent, ended up spending the night at Richard's house. Woke up the next morning, had some little breakfast stuff, got on the road, went out to this place, some kind of rock. It was like some, I don't know what it was, some kind of epic rock. So we flew there for a while. Uh, one battery, actually not for a while. I flew a Mavic sneakily over the over the hills and then... You know, then flew a mini quad, and then as soon as someone heard like babies squealing, oh, from mini shit. quad props, um, <laughs> some dude came over and was like, "No, no, you can't fly here." And we're like, "Okay, whatever." Hey, that's a horrible so. UK accent, by the way. Yeah, no, that was just an old man accent. That wasn't that wasn't specific to the UK. That was just an old man accent. Um, and then after that, we ended up driving to this old abbey, which is like a castle kind of thing, like a household. And that was sick. I have a video up on my channel about that. And it's called Drones versus English Abbey. And we flew that. It was sick. It started raining towards the end, but, you know, we got a lot of flights in. A couple explosions happened. And um, then after that, we went and slept at this, uh, I forget what it, was, what it was. It's like an Airbnb kind of, but it was an inn. Uh, I forget the name of it, but it was really, really intense. We got two, four, we got four. What, yeah, what was four beds, like big beds, and two rooms, and one of the rooms had a, essentially a third room in it for like 160 euros or something, or, well, pounds, mm. because 160 pounds and free breakfast and all kinds of that, all of that Ooh. jazz. So How much spent, is that in, in U.S. dollars? Uh, like six, like six bucks. Is, six bucks. <laughs> 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 the pound is like pretty close to the dollar now. <laughs> From what I've, oh, okay. from what I understand, it used to be a lot more, like almost mm-hmm. twice, but now it's pretty close to the dollar. Um, but yeah, so then after that, we woke up the next day, went to this abandoned Royal Air Force base, mm-hmm. uh, went in there, freaking walked around, skateboarded around inside there. I climbed up some gnarly pigeon shit tower. It was like six stories of epic pigeons. You know, like in the the English horror movies, you just like you'll be, it'll be really quiet. Someone's climbing something or walking into like a bell tower, and then it's just like. <laughs> like shit starts a bunch starts of pigeons around. go flying out and stuff yeah and they're like walking and it's all like <laughs> getting all serious with the violins and then it just goes <laughs> and fucking pigeon flies out and like flutters in their face like that's exactly what happened I was climbing up some sketchy ass breasted ladder I get about three fourths of the way up and this white pigeon freaking albino pigeon just goes <laughs> and like rips past my face and flies out full tuck pigeon it was totally a full tuck pigeon (laughs) so (laughs) we got up on there scare the shit out of you i kind of was expecting it like it was it was essentially that english horror film so i was like i was expecting (laughs) the pigeons to come out but you know maybe something else and uh got up there took some awesome pictures ended up flying around there were like super graffitied out tanks and it's actually an airsoft grounds like they actually rented out for people to play Mm -hmm. airsoft there 
And Matty Stunts yeah. was there because uh, he doesn't fly anymore. He just yeah, put his he was trying off, to snipe so. me under the bushes. So it was, it's <laughs> He's all, funny. Fuck steel. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because that day actually I realized that my camera, the A6500, the Sony, could actually do like gnarly rapid fire. Like you can put it on like multi shot, like shutter speed, or I mm. guess it's not shutter speed, but it's um. Uh, like it takes pictures super rapidly so you can get almost like stop motion yeah or if you want like multi-frame if you want to catch capture some movement and it shoots like i want to say 18 pictures a second and if you just hold the freaking yeah, shutter button down damn. it's just like <laughs> and it almost sounds like a <laughs> silenced mp5 so i was like running around with it going <laughs> like blowing people up with it it was hilarious burning up that sd um, card <laughs> yeah well i would sometimes pull the sd card out and just record the audio of oh. it because the shutter is so funny sounding <laughs> um and then like i did some gnarly tricks there it was really cool drew has been really freaking awesome i will go somewhere and i'll be like yeah i really want to try this but you know i don't want to explode a quad and then drew's like i'll do it <laughs> like you'll explode he's like yeah I'm like okay so he fucking gets all set up and uh, i had this trick where i wanted to do a half back flip like stall but i wanted to fly through an entire stairwell so it was like two windows on each side of a stairwell that were catty cornered at about a 45 degree angle one was about five feet lower than the other one and there was a stairwell banister in the middle so it was like window about seven feet a banister that was the same height as the window and then a drop down stairway so it was just an open area and it dropped down about three or four feet, and then there was another window, uh, and the window on the other side was smaller. So it was a big window, a bunch of space, small window, and the goal was to come in the big window, half backflip, and like stay upside down, inverted mm-hmm. over the banister, and have the quad's momentum and the gravity like pulling it down slowly, and then completing the flip and flying out the small window. Mm. And, like, I talked Drew into trying it, or he kind of talked himself into it, honestly. I just told him to do it. <laughs> and he ended up doing it, and he did it uh, He did it first try. It was a little little hinky, but he did it first try after a bunch of warm-ups. Yeah. And then he ended up just, like, I don't even know what he did. I think he just random, just flew into the wall for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, like, coming in hot. And then all of a sudden it was just, like, oh, <laughs> like, didn't even think about it. Just fucking rammed the wall. <laughs> oh, so, my God. So he ended up that's breaking he, that. That's because he's running those uh, mini quad, uh, was it mini quad club frames? They got those lifetime warranties. He's not scared of shit, man. He ain't scared of <laughs> anything. That carbon fiber is just ready to be splintered all over this. Just system. ready. <laughs> <laughs> so he did that. Uh, I ended up doing it too. It was super cool. I think that's the a, the DVR footage I sent you, Eric, and you posted on the failsafe, the team failsafe um, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you sent me like the screen grab from your GoPro from the your computer, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, um, the world needs to see this." <laughs> so I just uh, I put it straight onto there. I didn't really care if you didn't want people to see it or not. I was like, "I don't yeah. give a shit." Like, you sent it to me, I'm blasting it out. So yeah. it was all like cat cornered <laughs> and sideways and shit from me. Like, just it was. Holding it. It. Wait, <laughs> yeah. whatever. It's on. It, no, yeah. no, you know what? Nobody cared because like everyone had the same reaction as me when they saw it. it was just like. Fuck! <laughs> everybody on, like the posts were just like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah, no, it was sick. Uh, and that whole thing was like super graffitied out on the inside too. So there was a super gnarly "Hey Arnold" graffiti, um, and that other dude Gerald, I think his name is the that that football head. Yeah, like I'm surprised Helga wasn't in there. But I mean, I was flying around inside those buildings and finding all this graffiti and like boinking yeah, off of up. it. Super cool. Ended up raining. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. Uh, punched that hole. So, yeah, that was first try. I was kind of surprised. I ran through it a couple times, just got down to, like, down the momentum of fault, like, actually letting the quads momentum throw me through. So I'd blip a little bit of throttle and get over the banister and then just kind of go zero throttle and yeah. see what the quad would do just to kind of see the trajectory of what was going to happen. And, you know, once it once I did it a couple of times, I was like, all right, now I'm going to just do the half back flip. And it was just a timing thing at that point. I knew the trajectory was good as long as I could time it correctly and, and not full throttle into the wall across from me as well. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's a good clip, dude. Side, it's a good yeah, clip. Yeah. Now, now, what's your mindset, though? Like, is that your mindset when you usually go into tricks? Because I know, like, when I usually do stuff, I kind of do the same thing. I'll have a couple practice runs I do. And uh, just to get kind of the feel of it and everything, but like, what's your mindset when you go into doing something like that? Because that's kind of blind in a sense, because you're going, once you go through that window, I mean, your camera could have like a dark, you know, it could go dark to light. Like, you don't really know. 
it's different from practicing it from the outside to going to the inside. So, yeah, I mean, going into that particular trick, I knew exactly how to do it in my mind. It was just making my my hands do it first try and something not going wrong because it was funny because there is actually a bunch of drama in the video because drew did it and then i was like oh my god i need to do it and i go and get my shit and i come back and i plug in my quad and the video is black on a quad that i just flew like 15 minutes earlier and i'm like what the heck's going on i unplug the battery plug it back in like freaking out video is black and i'm like okay okay gotta change props so i'm changing props trying to do it to another quad and I, this is, I went to my old faithful quad because for this particular trip, like I, uh, I had three quads. I had two quads with my, all three of them have my new OSD, which is the, the impulse RC kiss OSD that you can like integrate all the kiss telemetry onto a very simple minimum OSD style stuff. And, uh, th- two of them had the newest firmware on them, which enables you to like go in and change PIDs and filters and whatnot via the controller or through the OSD, kind of like the beta flight boards. And then the old one, which was like the very first re- rendition of the OSD essentially would work with any of the older firmwares. And I had a quad that I call old faithful that like had all the old firmware on it. And like, it's the one that I've been flying for about six months now on the same firmware and everything worked and i just knew it would work however like i had flown in ireland with that quad versus the newer quads and the newer quads with the newer kiss stuff were less susceptible to wind when it came to vibrations like if it was a calm day it was actually smoother than the new firmware but when it came to wind which i've been dealing with a lot of wind because of just the weather in general in these northern northeastern european countries it's just like kind of rainy all the time and wind's always blowing in with the weather so you know like I w- ended up switching it all to uh, the newer stuff. But at this pr- at this point in time, Old Faithful was on an old firmware, which the rates are slightly different. So, like, as soon as I plugged in, got all my stuff uh, put on, all the quad ready to go, like, about to go do this trick, I'm flying a quad that has slightly different rates and feels slightly different compared to the one that I was flying. And also, we have, like, gnarly, like, gnarly uh, roll cloud coming in hot. Like, there was a serious rainstorm coming in. So, I had about four or five minutes to get this thing up in the air and do this trick. And also, the winds are starting to pick up. So, it was, like, a little bit nerve-wracking. But, I don't know. The footage came out really well. And I think the the kind of story buildup was really sick as well. And I don't know if it's going to be on Rotor Riot's channel or what. But well, if, you'll probably if guys... see it in the next two to three months. If, if guys want to see the... If guys want to see the stunt... <laughs> Go to the, Next go two to, to the, three uh, months, if it goes onto their channel, you'll probably see it in a couple of days. If it goes onto yours, right? It, well, if guys yeah, want to, if guys want to see the stunt, they can just go to the uh, the Team Failsafe Instagram page and check it out yeah. there. That you'll get like a little sneak peek of it. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, but yeah, we left there, went out, um, stayed at Jay's house that evening. Woke up super super early. Uh, he took us down to. What did we do after that? How, how did we get to France? I'm trying to think. <laughs> train. We took a train, right? Oh, Stuart. Okay, yeah. So, anyways, Jay and Stuart. Stuart is a different guy. There was a guy named Clinton that was originally in the car with us with Jay, and he was driving us around. Literally, he drove from, like, southern London, or south of London, like, four hours or something, all the way up to Ooh. Hollyhead, then drove us all the way back down. So, he was, like, I think he drove, like, a 1,000 or something kilometers total maybe more 1200 kilometers total um and then so the next day after clinton left uh another dude named stewart which was a scottish guy which i learned a bunch of stuff from uh no like we were trying to figure out how to say no in a scottish accent and also (laughs) a bunch of these weird little like things that they say like maybe i maybe no which is like maybe yes maybe no (laughs) i can't do it very well but it was (laughs) hilarious to listen to this guy talk Um, basically we just made him talk the whole time because it's hilarious to listen to um, so we ended up meeting up in London, had a meet up with all, like a couple UK guys. I think in about 10 to 15 people ended up showing up and, uh, actually cl- uh, freaking Mr. Clean flight himself showed up What? and Dominic yeah, showed up. S- yeah. Dominic was Damn. there. We had all kinds of crazy people coming out. Uh, we had a little meet up from there from like nine till 11. And then we ended up getting on Eurostar, which was a train that goes under the English channel from, uh, in- London to Paris. Um, and that was like a, I don't know, four, they're at four hour f- train ride or something. And we were first class and it was all paid for via like, we it got goes under the water. Stewart. Yep. It goes under the English channel. What? 
Do you get to yeah. see like the fish and shit out the window? <laughs> no, it's under <laughs> it's deep, 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 deep. That'd be sick though, right? Like if yeah. it had like a clear dome. Fuck no, that wouldn't see a big ass Loch Ness <laughs> monster eye right there. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a clear dome, kind of like the guy from the Fifth Element, you know, his little clear head. You know. Anyways, <laughs> whoa! Why do you have that? Why is it so big? That, we won't talk about that. Thing. That dome. <laughs> so, so yeah, we got to Paris. Uh, Stuart and Jay. So Stuart kind of lined up this thing where a random dude picked us up from the airport that lived in France that we didn't know. We had no idea what was going on. I don't know how this situation came about, but we got off the train. Everybody was super hangry. I was kind of like freaking out because the whole situation of we're getting into a new country. We don't speak the language and we don't know what to do. We don't know where we're going to stay. And Paris is not a really good place to fly in general just because of like all the terroristic threats. And then oh, just, shit, it's a downtown right. city and we have drones and I've got like freaking 15 or $20,000 worth of gear on my back and oh. I have my luggage roller bag and a skateboard. I just, my hands are full. All of us have our own luggage. Sounds like and bad all, news. Yeah. We're all trying to go around in a city where we don't speak the language. We don't really know where to go, what to do. Anyways, this dude shows up in like a freaking eight series BMW, like an older one. We were like, is he even going to have room for all our stuff? And yeah, you could probably fit like 38 bodies in the back of this <laughs> thing. So we open all the Those doors. Those are sick, actually. That's a fast car. It was, yeah. It was pretty dope, man. It was cool. <laughs> I did not expect. Those are cool old cars. The one with the flip-up lights in the front and all that? No, it was, uh, I want to say it was like a mid-2000s. Like, I want to say like 2008 or 2009. It might have been a 7 Series. It was a large car. Okay. It was a large Yeah, BMW. that sounds like a 7 Series. 7's a little series bit longer. little, like, two-door coupes with the flip-up lights in the front, and they're fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Anyways, he picked us up. Literally, guy just like rolls up, kind of half speaking English. His name's Eric. Uh, we were kind of like, eh, I don't know what we should do. Maybe we <laughs> should, uh, maybe we should just get a train right now and go down to Barcelona. Because the original plan was like, all right, we need to go to Barcelona because I want to hit Barcelona. Like Barcelona sounds cool as shit. I've always wanted to go there since I was a kid, skateboarding and stuff. So. Um, the plan was to go from Paris immediately and down to Barcelona and then to take some kind of plane from Barcelona directly to um, Rome or either to go from Paris all the way over to Geneva and then Geneva to that uh, event that was in Germany that just recently happened. I forget the name of the town that it was in, but there was some event in Germany um, and Anthony from Immersion RC was inviting me to come out there and they were trying to figure out all this stuff. None of that stuff ended up working out. We just got in the car with this random French dude. He took us to his house. And as soon as he took us to his house, uh, it was like the whole, like, the light had changed. Everybody was like, whoa, um, this is serious, and it's cool as crap. This guy is very hospitable. And oh, nice. he actually is a genuine guy. Like, we had no idea who this guy was. It was just like, get in my BMW. We go. <laughs> I, am in a, I am in bus lane. You must get in car now. We're like, oh, okay, go, okay, go. Okay. <laughs> you seen that movie so, Hostel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I was expecting my Achilles tendon to be like chopped, <laughs> yeah. and then me try to get out. That like scarred me for life. Yeah, I mean, fuck yeah. I can't think of anything hostile without me thinking about the Achilles tendon. Scene. Oh. So, yeah. So we got to his house. He had freaking like multiple beds for us to sleep in. He had three huge beds for us to sleep in. What? We literally probably drained his. Uh, his electric bill through the roof all day every day we were charging like non-stop i had like 68 things fl- plugged into one plug <laughs> i'm kind of surprised his house didn't burn down um but yeah i mean he took us out we had an amazing french dinner that night we woke up the next day just kind of hung out um and we went and tried to fly this place called the asterix theme park which is like a gnarly uh, mm. it's like basically the disney world of france it's a like weird french I- viking dude we went there in the morning it was raining um, we went out and we had lunch. We ended up meeting up with some people at a local flying field. We flew there for a while. And then that later that evening, we actually went back to the place and, and got to fly it again, um, which was freaking amazing. Uh, a couple of lo- local guys ended up taking us there, and it was just unreal. The sunset was prime. We had a whole, like, think of, like, the biggest Disney World-style attraction with all these roller coasters and all these epic rides. And we got to just ha- wreak havoc on it. I found some <laughs> gnarly slide on a playground and, like, put my quad at the top of it and sent it down it at Mach 8. And then, like, came out and was r- ripping around roller coasters and, like, running Mavic's 
through the water. <laughs> like there was this really dope shot that I got where I basically am looking at the water's reflection of this gnarly roller coaster. You know how they like to put like about five feet of water underneath all these roller coasters for some yeah. reason in case someone falls out, they go. <laughs> it, I can't. They just drowned. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do the noise. <laughs> but yeah, they're like basically. Yeah, I can't do it either. <laughs> um, instead of like, instead of just going, they just drown immediately. Like inhale yeah. fully, full lungs of water. <laughs> you're like, woo! I'm gonna survive the the fall from <laughs> this, and then you're like, you just drown. <laughs> Toasted, yeah. So they did that, and we flew there with the Mavic. Flew some gnarly stuff. Uh, then Drew got stuck in a tree. Uh-oh. And it was, like, ungettable. It was in a tree that you could not climb. It was the very last battery. You know how, like, if you go to a place and someone's like, oh, I'm going to fly one more, that means you fucking run. Because mm-hmm. if they say they're going to fly one more, you're going to be there all night trying to get a quad out of a tree. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, see you later, bro. Good, good hanging with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got one more. All right, see you. I'm out. <laughs> like, use yeah, the, yeah. Use I that. Got, I got dinner. I got dinner. I got to go. <laughs> use that branch as, like, a pillow if you can. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm almost done. <laughs> Got stuck in a tree, like, trying to full throttle that shit out of the tree, not having it. Totally stuck, like, perfectly face down, GoPro watching us as we we're trying to get this thing out of the tree for, like, 45 minutes. Oh. Um, and I ended up taking a huge rock, like, the size of three fists, and just, like, grandma tossing that thing up into its face and knocking it out of the tree. So that's how we got that thing down. It took a while. We were throwing so, sticks so at Drew it. So Drew owes you for a long time, it sounds oh, like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. So <laughs> then, uh, yeah, the next day after that, we, uh, what did we do? Oh, well, we freaking hung out, basically slept in all day, and then we went to some gnarly, like, weird park thing. It was kind of like a, a restaurant on a lake with near a train track and like there was a weird little mini castle um and i flew there it was super cool there was like it's a weird lake with a bunch of algae in it but the algae was kind of like it looked like fire under the water so the algae was kind of like boiled up on itself it was kind of it was like a three-dimensional style water look so you're like looking into the water and then there's like you know those funky jellyfish that you see uh they have like uh, it looks like a flamingo dress Kind of, uh, like your standard Discovery jellyfish. No, <laughs> I, you know what a man of war looks like, or a, like a really. Oh, dead... I, okay, I know what you're talking about. The ones with like the flowy. Yeah, like... it's got like a flowy lace style yeah, tentacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, it's basically yeah, yeah. that on steroids, but in algae colors. So gray and gray, black, green, huh. and on know, fire. And on fire about a couple, <laughs> like anywhere from a foot to about an inch under the water. And the water is super And Steel calm was and on bunch. UK or whatever, wherever you were. You were on shrooms. So it <laughs> yeah. was awesome. It was serious. <laughs> and, I'm just you know, kidding. I'm kidding. There are like gnarly ducks on this thing as well. And I'm like chasing ducks with a mallard or with a, uh, not a mallard. I was chasing mallards <laughs> with a Mavic. <laughs> And uh, it was super cool. Like, I'm really excited. To, I mean, I was editing the footage today on the train, and it's it's dope. I'm excited to get that edited out. You know and how you see those videos where, like, dudes put cats, like like taxidermy cats on, on drones, quads. and they fly yeah. them? You need oh. to do that with your Mavic now and put, like, a fucking mallard on there. <laughs> a mallard head. Just a mallard head on top. I've actually seen some funny videos recently or pictures with, like, a Mavics with two 360 cams, like one on the top and one on the bottom. I think I should have two mallard heads, one on top and one on bottom, like, <laughs> yeah. facing backwards. So people are like, is that, that drone spying on me? That fucking mallard's got an eye on your ass. <laughs> oh, my God, was that a mallard that just flew by? <laughs> I don't know what mallard ducks make as a noise, or I would have tried to imitate it. But they, they I don't quack. think they do. They just, like... <laughs> they quack. They, they just quack. quack, yeah. And their quacks don't echo at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much a mallard right there. So. Uh, and then, yeah, after that, Basically went to sleep, woke up at five o'clock in the morning. That after after we had some amazing Nutella crepes, Ooh. Um, mm. I got, uh, yeah, I had some amazing French food. And then the next morning we woke up at five a.m. and uh, Drew had misplaced the place of the. Air, uh, we were supposed to take a train from Paris to uh, Turin, which is where we are now. And uh, we were supposed to go to the airport, which was or the train station, which was in central or northern Paris which was only like 15 minutes away. 
and no, but it was the one on the southern side of Fran- or Paris. <laughs> so it was like 45 minutes away, and it left at 6.30 in the morning, and we had woken up and left the house at about 5.45. So we had to get there, and then we would have had 15 minutes to navigate an entire train station and find the train and get on it. And we were in first class as well, so typically uh. first class cars are all the way at the very end, at the very front of the train. And anyways, we got out. We had... I think 15 minutes to find the train, get on it. We're like skateboarding, like ripping through this place. There, it was super disorienting. We had no idea where we were. We ended up just saying, "Oh, let's go this way. Let's try this." And we ripped down the side um, towards like train terminal one or whatever. Popped out. Happened to see the word Turin um, mixed with a bunch of other letters and numbers and things <laughs> that are in Italian that I don't understand. And we found it. And they let us on, and we got to our first-class seats, and we got on the train with probably 45 seconds to spare. shit. Like, we got on the train, and, like, we're we're on the train putting our bag on the little thing, and it's just, like, boop, gone, fucking starts, just starts leaving. So So moral moral of this story is uh, don't let Drew tell you where to go. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and also everybody needs to know that Steele is a very, very patient guy, it seems like, after uh, Drew's been putting him through a lot lately. <laughs> no, nah, he's been doing all the work. Honestly, I kind of sat on in this trip with my own uh, lack of just uh, responsibility. I mean, I, I want to I enjoy it. I want to enjoy meeting people and having all this, this fun doing this stuff, but... I don't want to. But now you're it. saving Drew out, out of everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, stuck in a tree. Don't worry, Drew. I'll save you. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong things and wait to a train. Don't worry, Drew. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> it's a two way street, man. He's been doing. He's basically been my PR agent, like right. setting up all these meetings, and then I'm kind of like, you know, I'll get you out of this area, this predicament that you're in right now. <laughs> That's why they pay you the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we sat on that train for six hours. I edited my China video, put that out, and also edited this other half of the video from the Ducks Lake. And uh, then we got off the train. Some random dudes picked us up from the airport. Well, they didn't pick us up. They said, we're going to walk to this house. It's 800 meters away. It ended up being like a mile and a half. Woo. We put the stuff um, down and... Uh, went out and tried to fly and we went to all these bandos which were a complete bust like the guy the guys just like looked up online for abandoned spots they didn't like have them never flown there or anything (laughs) so we're like oh god like we don't know what we're gonna do it's really hot here by the way like i stripped down in the middle of a intersection in the middle of italy like in this town i just like pulled over on the side of the road in the middle of a four way intersection like a busy one (laughs) there's a bunch of people stopped at a stoplight and i just took my pants off and put on shorts and was it, it was, humid? It's pretty sick. Humid or is yes, it like dry? Like it, dry heat or humid heat? It's humid heat. It humid was heat. dry earlier, but I think some humidity's rolled in because mm. I think in Paris it was like fifty-eight to about sixty-five and pretty low humidity, and then uh, here it's like freaking eighty-five, and sometimes there's humidity. So Ugh. it got pretty hot, and we were sweating our our little cracks off all day. <laughs> our giblets off. <laughs> yeah, giblets were on the ground, rolling around, leaving marks. <laughs> Got to get that gold bond, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Got to throw that gold, in there. It's like a bunch of little bond. trolls just, like, blowing mint mint dust on you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Keep it cool. Cereal. Mint dust. I like that. I like that. Uh, so, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, after that, we found this rando building on the way home uh, that's under construction and dove the crap out of it and you know like all these videos i know johnny i've seen his videos where he's flying that one building that he flew in about 38 of his videos um where he was (laughs) diving that building in miami and it had this crane attached to it and it was like a red and white crane and it kind of like attaches to the building and goes up the side of like these skyscrapers and they use it to build the skyscraper essentially yeah use it to like you're talking about so anyways i've always been like you won't, you won't, like when I'm watching the videos, trying to say someone should go behind the skyscraper, or between the skyscraper and the and the crane. No one ever does. I know where this is going. I watched your Instagram stories, but just All keep right. going. All right, so <laughs> no one ever did this. No one has gone in between this crane and the skyscraper. Uh, and I was like, Drew, you won't, you won't. And he's like, oh, I'll try it. It should be a big gap, right? I'm like, uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, it, lo- <laughs> it looks pretty man. Totally, bro. Go for it. <laughs> Do it. So he just like <laughs> goes up there and freaking boinks all boinks his ass through there, like literally wall tap. <laughs> He tried to, like, knife edge, but he didn't have a lot of camera angles, so he didn't have a lot of forward momentum, and he ended up, like, <laughs> bouncing off the building. And he, it was good. Like, he did it. He did it multiple times, but it was just crazy because, I, I don't know, and then I did it after that. It was just kind of, you know, someone got to try it first, and then it's it's doable after that, and you get going. So we've been kind of pushing each other to to try new tricks. I actually did a, my it, first it, Maddie flip today. If you if you want to call it that, I don't know what else to call it. The thing where you like look at an obstacle and flip over it. Yeah, you go front flip and then you power backwards, basically, right? Yeah, I did that over a crane today. He's like, "You won't." I'm like, "All right, that, let me try." That was your first time, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't do that shit. I don't Dang, know. Drew popping cherries over there with steel. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, you won't. That. You <laughs> won't. It was get him. sick. Get him. It was sick. I, I mean, it wasn't sick like sick enough to where I'll do it again. But you know, like for your first time in an abandoned construction explosion. Fly, flying around cranes and stuff it was pretty cool uh and then we went to some good, good thing for you know what that's that's a good spot for that trick because uh cranes it's yeah. so high up that you have room for like that fall when you have that blind like backwards yeah. like power thing which yeah. is funny when i first tried that trick it, i found out how blind it was like it was a really a, a big field trick and then remember that whole drama thing where like Maddie Stunts was like, if I ever see one more blind fucking, like, backflip fucking thing or a power loop, blah, 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 blah. And then I did that, and I was like, that's the most blind, irresponsible trick I've ever (laughs) done in my life. Like, you are going to eat shit no matter what if you don't. A a blind power loop, at least you're going up and over something. You know, you'll come down and you'll see, like, you'll back to what you're going to hit or whatever. That one, it's like, dude, you're, like, basically halfway upside down the whole time so it yeah yeah, yeah. Go, uh, no go, it's super scary. shove it up your i would not <laughs> recommend it i would not recommend it as like a a consistent trick like it's not no. something that you can do consistently in an area that yeah yeah well uh, actually you know you know what though um i don't know if a lot of people seen this but uh i think it was on the rotorite facebook group or the guy might have posted it to a couple of them but he's at like a race and there's like you know how they do those towers now those yeah, like PVC yeah. towers. I, saw each, I know what you're talking about, dude. The dude was like, "This is like my favorite trick." Like, I, you know, was, hold on, he was so, ripping that that trick. He was doing it consistently. Well, and I was like, "Hold dude. on." So I I saw the video and I was watching it and I don't want to rag on the guy or anything, but I analyzed the video and every single one of those is a clip that's cut together. So. No. So technically, you just he could have tried, tried it a thousand <laughs> times. It's not like he went in there and did it all first try, and it was all like super consistent. Ah, oh, don't tell me that. Yeah, go watch it again. Every oh. single one of those things is a new clip. Really? Yeah. Because so, I was yeah, like, the way, I was amazed. The, like, I don't usually comment on things, and I commented on that. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking gnarly. And then, like, I got to thinking about it. I was like, wait. Were those cut together? And I looked at it again, and every single one is cut together. And oh, like, oh, man. Okay. It takes away yeah, from c- it a little bit, but still it's really That impressive. takes away from it a lot for me, though, just because I was, like it looked like he was just like back-to-back like just doing it. And, like, uh, it was, was like, like a pink and green is- like tower, right? With, yeah. Like- no, it's totally the same one that you're talking about. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was amazing to me, and now I feel like I'm. I've been. I feel like I've been cheating on, bro. <laughs> yeah, basically for the people that don't know what we're talking about, there was a tower. It's essentially like a eight by eight by eight style PVC pipe, multi-story box, like two cubes on top of each other. And this guy is using it as a freestyle platform to go in and out of. So he might be diving through the top and out the side. And it's again like a cube, like I'm talking about. And it's. Um, open on all four sides or all six sides if you want if you will except for the bottom one and he would do like an inverted blind power loop through these things multiple times he'd go through the bottom one and then blindly power loop through the top one and these again there's not very much room for error and you don't have a lot of room you're like full throttle you to get through these things and you're doing it blindly and it's very difficult to do and the way that we were kind of deceived was that it was done in a such manner that it looked like all of these things were linked together in one run 
but it was not. It was all cut together in an editing, like edits after, like post. So technically, you could have tried it a million times and gotten like three shots um, out of the 50 batteries that he flew trying to do it. And then, you know, I will say that those tricks are pretty brutal when you crash because you're like freaking full throttle blindly backwards. So I don't know. I kind of believe that the guy's just really consistent at it. So practice but, makes uh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get so it I down. <laughs> to finish up my little endeavor, and then we can get on to what's new with you guys. Um, I, we went and flew an, a little... It was probably the sickest bando that I've flown in a long time. Some kind of weird industrial park here in uh, Italy. I, it looks super gnarly. I'll have to post pictures from it on my uh, Instagram or something, but whoa. Gnarliest, gnarliest thing I've seen in a while. Um, had some like gnarly pillars and some weird like elevator shafts that had holes at the bottom that I was diving down these elevator shafts. Hmm. And uh, there's some weird church with like a spirally staircase that was completely unopened and made out of spikes on a tower with a cross at the top and the sun was setting behind it. And I'm like getting all these really epic like climb in shots to this cross and then revealing some epic italian city in the background and there's pizza and people holding their fingers together like making faces at each other and shaking their hands (laughs) so and then we flew a park which is right next door which had a like miniature nuclear cooling tower and a playground right next to each other which (laughs) is pretty typical you know european nuclear cooling tower and a playground an extra arm uh, (laughs) it never hurts on the kid (laughs) yeah Oh, fuck. And, <laughs> and I'm doing like multi flip boinks and multi flip like butt stalls on that thing. Like it was, dude, it the was boinks, just... dude. I think I'm going to ha- hashtag boink like every time I do something and like I accidentally hit the ground or like I bounce boink. off of like the side boink. of a, a wall or something. Like that. Hashtag boink. That's from uh, <laughs> uh, Team, <laughs> team Fortress. Uh, team Fortress. Uh, the Scout. Team, for- team Fortress. He, when he hits me, he goes boink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. have you ever have you ever boinked a wing, Ruben? Uh, yeah, on a hay bale. Damn! And it took my that prop hay off. Bale. It took my prop off. You don't have folding props on those things? Fuck no! <laughs> Why? That's too much drag, yo. Dude, it's just it's too, <laughs> it's too much craft for you. You got you got to balance it, and if a little screw falls off, then you're fucked. Don't get me started on that. All right. We're here. To, I get we're, we want to. We want to hear about it. We want to talk, talk about, about your update. <laughs> oh well. I, so I'm almost like I'm done. After that, we went and had the most amazing okay. pizza I've ever had in my life, and now we're back at this dude's house, Andrea. Um, and he's got like a dorm here. He's going to school, and uh, we're. I'm. Drew is sleeping on a couch in front of me, and I'm blasting him in the face, trying while he's trying to sleep with industrial yeah. earplugs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he has them in. He might. I don't uh, think he does, and then my bed is a big blow up mattress behind me. It's like a queen or something. I'm gonna, f- I have a blanket, but I feel like it's just an itchy, savage, like scratchy wool blanket. So, is we'll it hot? Is it hot in there? Tonight. Is it hot in there? Uh, no, they have this epic AC unit exploding inside the room. Nice. But it would be definitely <laughs> hot outside if you were sleeping with no AC. Ugh. Yeah, can't sleep all sweaty. It's just gross. Yeah, so, it's cool how everybody's like taking care of you guys though. Yeah, yeah, it's really, cool. really strange. Like, and all of these people, it's funny because you, you meet up with them and you assume that they all know each other and they've all hung out before. But, like, every single one, every single crew that we've hung out with, it's basically two random dudes that like mini quads that have never really hung out before. Yeah. And they end up becoming, like, really good mm-hmm. friends through helping us. And it's, it's like, kind of, a, it's a cool thing. Yeah. Eric? And, like, you got you to gotta go say, ahead. that's why you get paid the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that amazing Rotor- race. You got that Rotor Riot gold, man. That Rotor Riot gold. It's I just got, rolling in. I gotta do that. Uh, no, I gotta that, do that sound that clip. Rotor Riot money just freaking flying out, huh? <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> I gotta get so that you sound got, clip. You guys have that uh, that dollar bill machine, like when people go to strip clubs and they like <laughs> hit the <laughs> button. It's like a gun and it just starts flying out. That's like yep. the Rotor Riot one. <laughs> yeah, for for every sticker that's printed, four thousand euros is sent to my bank account, right? <laughs> yeah, except that the uh, the big twist to this is that Rotor Riot is really like it's just Monopoly money and it ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> that Rotor Riot gold. <laughs> that Rotor Riot gold. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Chad Capper's the leprechaun at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> yeah. 
Got all the gold. That's Stu Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, so what's uh, up with you guys? I know Eric's been freaking posting videos of him diving through all these weird no roof. So, no roof. Hey, what? Just to be a little, like, a little, like, I'm going to be a bear of good news. So I learned this little tidbit while I was over here in, in England. So there's a difference between a bando and a ruin. <laughs> Essentially, they're the same thing, right? What's the difference mm-hmm. between a bando and a ruin? A ruin is okay, so ruined. A, a bando <laughs> is, say, like a factory that's closed down yeah, and is no longer, like, you know, in service, should you mm-hmm. say? And a ruin is, like, a uh, something to where, like, it Worth. was an old architectural building or something that is no longer in service. What's What's usually the difference between a bando and a ruin, though? Uh, uh, a ruin has something couple hundred to do years. probably with, like, yeah, maybe the age of it or um, possibly maybe, like, uh, there's some historic <laughs> value to it to where uh, Let like me, uh, a bando is just, like, the old, um, you know, dildo factory that went out of business. Let me, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me drop some knowledge on you, right? Let me drop some knowledge. This is going to be a little tidbit. You're going to be like... Whoa! It's gonna be that a was just a, explosion. That was just a big uh, steel just going <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yes. So looky here. All right. So <laughs> the difference is, is a bando has a roof, and a ruin doesn't. What? Now that just sounds silly. What? Have you ever been to a ruin that had a roof? Uh. I've never been to a bando. No, no, you know what? Because most of them are like a million years old, and the <laughs> roof is gone. See, because the the roof how was many, made how out many of like bandos the roof was made out of sticks. That had roofs. <laughs> Zero. No, they all have roofs. <laughs> I've never been to a bando never, that didn't have a roof. I've never been to a bando. yeah. I've never been to a bando that didn't have a roof unless it was like an abandoned construction site that didn't get completed. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, like. The only abando that I've been to that didn't have a roof was in Perpiat, which was right outside of Chernobyl, and that was a ruin. Hmm. That's the only not that's the only anomaly of a bando and a ruin. Yeah, but when you're when you're forces. talking to fools, ain't nobody gonna be like, Well, technically it's not a ruin, it's actually the bando. <laughs> you're gonna be like, Look, you know what the fuck I'm talking about, dog? <laughs> Dude, that it voice is be, <laughs> You need to fucking do the intro with that voice. Right. <laughs> that was my. Well, technically, uh, since uh, it's a ruin in a bando and there's somebody still taking a shit in the corner, it's all the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, that's... I guess, yeah, that is another thing. Are there homeless in the ruin? Probably not. <laughs> probably, they're probably not. They're, they're called, probably they're called the natives. Mass- massacred by <laughs> the natives. The natives are still wow. occupying the facility. <laughs> no, it's not a facility. It's acting of a, ru- a bando. <laughs> They're probably a freaking pyroclastic flowed out all of skeleton status in the corner. Oh, oh shit. Man. But yeah, shit. no, I didn't know that. That's uh that's good to know. That's good. Yeah. Good it's info. Not, it's not even it's not even a fact at all. I just made it up off the top of my head and it's funny <laughs> as shit. So good good uh, like four minutes of wasted random bando information. You just wasted four <laughs> minutes of my life. God dang it, man. The fireworks are waiting for us. <laughs> Dude, yeah, what is up with the 4th of July? My I mean, kid's walking around with a goddamn lighter Dude, right I don't now. Know. <laughs> it's a I don't know about you, one, but why, why aren't you getting some shit right now where you're at, Steel, and just lighting that shit off in the streets, screaming, America! <laughs> I did say America a few times while I was here. The problem go. is, is like, I just came from France, and I spent three days trying to learn how to speak French. And now I'm in Italy, and everyone in Italy hates everyone in France. And I only know French words. But oh, shit. the funny thing is... As French and Italy and or Italian and Spanish are all very similar, so when I try to say like "we" oui, as in "yes" or "bonjour," uh, it's f- similar to uh, "c" si, <laughs> as in "yes" in freaking Italian, and I don't know how to say "bonjour" in Italian. But I will tell you this: that the one word that I did learn that I already knew in Italian, or sorry, in French, is "putain." Okay, Pizza. Yeah, that's like that's that, kind of like a generic term that people use for like the the f word basically, <laughs> um, and so in, was... Ital- in in Italy, all right, I argued uh, we had an argument earlier. Okay, how similar is putain and putana? 
one fucking letter, right? Yeah. They were like, it's totally different. It's totally different. So Pitana is Piton in Italy or in, ta- it, in, in Italian, and Pitana is French, and then Puta is Spanish. <laughs> <Puta>. <laughs> So, <laughs> so like all of these words are so similar, yet all of these people hate each other, and it's just like the funniest shit ever. You go to one country, and I'm like, occasionally I'll say we oui over like something like merci, which is like thank you, mm-hmm. and they're like, no, 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 you must not. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so just smile, <laughs> nod your head. Yeah, yeah. I they, had some dude like buck at me in the. In, I was like walking all confident, like with my backpack and my camera. I'm like, "Yo, I'm gonna have to bust your ass with my A6500 on these anal beads." He bucked you. Take you. He just kind of like walked <laughs> by me and looked at me like he was gonna do something, and then he goes, Bleh. "Really?" Like, I don't even know what the fuck he said. Oh shit! Just in, we were in kind of the ghetto. We went to some rando hipster. So they have justification. Isn't it called justification when you like when people come in and take over the ghetto and. J- gentrification oh yeah 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 they're doing that in oakland yeah this goes on in atlanta all the time hipster atlanta east atlanta used to be super ghetto now it's gentrified got all them white folk rolling Mm -hmm. up in there trying to turn that hipster style all up into 11 got that bay Uh, area money yep yep and they're doing the same thing here in italy and Mm. um yeah we were in the kind of the not so much gentrified area where it was like i don't know if this is you know, like this guy's kind of creepy, but you know that restaurant over there is pretty bomb, and all the waitresses have tattoos, so we should go. <laughs> so, Dang. yeah, that ain't happening over here in the streets where I'm. Yeah, at, so. you need you need you need one one brawler in the group. You just need one. A brawler. We we got eyeliner. We got uh, mustache. We got uh, we got two Italian dudes. One of the dudes is pretty skinny, weighs about 110 pounds. And the other guy, Andre, I don't know, Andre, he could, he could ball, he could brawl, maybe. <laughs> That's why they look. Know, if you guys act like you're not scared and just go, go straight at the dudes, they're gonna be like, why are all these skinny dudes coming at us? <laughs> skinny dudes coming in hot. <laughs> why are they all they're skinny? Like, oh, these dudes know know something. They're, they're, I mean, I will say, I will us. say, Drew's kind of got that crip walk going on. Like he looks like he's about to. I had to fuck somebody up. Well, you, well, you probably you, you probably threw them off because usually all the Americans are like hella fat and overweight. So like if if you had Eric and me, we'd be like hella like like doo, 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 like they would know. <laughs> Don't fuck with those guys. The big blobs are coming in. <laughs> <laughs> they can throw their weight around. <laughs> <laughs> Just lay on people. I'll show you. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Taking people down with that, <laughs> that jelly roll. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, that oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good defense system right there. You don't mess with yeah. the big guy. <laughs> you treat me what you treat me bad one more time. I'm gonna make you breathe out my belly button. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got like oh. six, six six Reuben coming at you. Oh, You're running God. the other way. You just lay on people. <laughs> just lay on there and you do a little twitch and they freak out. <laughs> or you can take your pants off and run after him. That'll scare a motherfucker. I can uh, guarantee you. This is true. I haven't shaved in three months. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> He's chasing people down in the streets all hairy. Oh, like, God, what is that? <laughs> oh, my God, is that George Bush? <laughs> and the, and it the, steals <laughs> mythical creature. <laughs> the crazy thing is because it's now it's like humid and hot over there, so you like fucking nut sacks are just like dry <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> Big old sack <laughs> running back and forth. <laughs> How do you outrun that shit? <laughs> oh my god! You can't juke Dude, them. It's, it's just going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slap. Exactly. Bye, man. Oh man! I, I went. I'm oh, sorry. I took it. Took a little too far this there. Just, just, yeah, just gold bond little. powder. Just, <laughs> just a trail of gold bond powder behind <laughs> you. Like Ashy, all... Ashy Larry from Dave Chappelle. <laughs> He's like, yep, yep. <laughs> Exactly. Damn. Damn that skin! Them skin flakes could kill, Ugh. kill a man. Ugh. Yeah. You all right, all right. Well. Re- Ruben, what have you been doing though? What What have you been up to? Uh, I don't know. I've been uh, I've been trying to get this <laughs> motherfucker done. Uh, trying to get pieces of it done, and then we had to go buy uh, uh, fireworks. What are you getting done? You talking about that big plane? The big? How big is it? Uh it's eleven, eleven foot four. Damn. Oh it don't gosh, fit. You can so see. Cra- that's so crazy. You got small enough children to fly, don't you? I'm going to try. I think I could probably get a glide test with them. We'll work on the CG. I'll start with a little one, and then I'll work hey, more honey. with a bigger one. <laughs> hey, honey, hold on to that, hold on to that balance point. 
Dad, I don't, don't know move. About this. Don't, <laughs> don't move. move. Dad, like, Dad, why are you giving me a helmet and a, and a mouthpiece? <laughs> well, I'm going to drop you off the edge of the cliff, and you're going to hold on for dear life. Mom's at the bottom. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, just run and hold on. I'll start the motor <laughs> mid glide. I think you should just get like a Hello Kitty backpack and like hot glue that shit to the bottom of the plane, and just try to make it a paraglider for your daughter. Oh, it'll. I, I, I'm not kidding. It will carry a small kid. It will. <laughs> Dude, I, I bet that thing is huge. Dude, it'll carry a small kid. What's the payload on that? Do you think you can take? Like, what? What do you realistically? What do you think you could have on that? I can probably carry about. I think it could probably thirty probably about, pounds, forty pounds. Yeah, it'll probably carry about. Yeah, I, w- I would guess and say say about that much. Yeah, yeah, that's not some bad. freaking Dude. aerospace engineer is gonna be I, like, no, well, hey, according to this calculation, I, 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 <laughs> I posted it. I posted it because like like I, I have a LinkedIn account. And so I posted it on there, and like hell of fools were like, "Oh, what's this? When will that be in production? Oh, can we look at it? How much will it carry?" And I'm like, "Fuck, dude, just, I just, it's, I just made it. Jeez, let me run some tests first. God damn it! Plus, hell you're let me run a couple tests over that wall Trump is making, and you know, smuggle some weed back and forward. Smuggle my relatives over. Come on, guys. Yeah. Coast is clear. My aunt needs to come over. <laughs> Fuck the coyotes. Call Ruben. <laughs> Landed at my grandma's house. Her mouth would just drop. Oh shit." But I, I got to do some tests on it. But, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I've been doing small pieces of it and then, you know, getting fireworks. And the kids want to do fireworks today. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to put it down. And then my mom's over. So we're getting ready to light some fireworks and blow some fingers off. There's a, there will be blood. There will be blood. <laughs> there will be. There's always blood. There's always so, blood. Someone's losing some digits tonight. <laughs> What's funny, because, oh, like, on my street, I'm like, I think, I think really... I think I'm the only one that's going to do fireworks today or this year. Last year I was the only one. So like I got all like the speed signs and my kids got like safety glasses and shit. They got gloves on (laughs) just because I'm super paranoid and weird like that. But I got like fire extinguishers. (laughs) I got the hose out. Yeah. You don't want your kids losing some digits. And then like they can never count to 10 in school. They're like, I only have nine fingers, teacher. Oh, Oh, damn you, dad. I don't know what 10 is. (laughs) God. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing too crazy, man. Nothing too crazy. We were trying to we were trying to link up before uh, and and record another session, but uh this one this one worked out pretty good cuz now we got time. Although, yeah. You know. That that's my fault though. We got no, no 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 no. Don't worry about that. We I had, had to go to the with the I had to go to the dentist. I had to go to the dentist with doctor right. visit. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go to yeah. we had to go to the dentist too, so no worries. Um and then, uh, and now it's like oh, too much candy. My wife's like, "All right, we got we got to get the barbecue going." And I'm like, "Oh fuck, the barbecue, <laughs> dude!" All I, every time anyone says barbecue, all I can think of is that freaking balloon shop, bro. Let me oh. get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that I just like mix two videos together. <laughs> but, hey, you know, like, put the that. balloon shop video that you were quoting at the beginning. Put that shit on the barbecue. <laughs> like, oh like yeah, it. brother. You, you got to get some sound clips. No, 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 we'll, we'll get some sound clips from that. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll oh, see yeah. if we can put on the little soundboard thingy that I got. We'll see if we can do that. Dude, we're, well, we're still working on epic sound clips. You know, like, yeah. you you know Balloon Shop, don't you? That's like an old YouTube channel. The dudes used to go to Georgia Tech, and they make, like, skit comedies. Mm-hmm. Like, three dudes, a redheaded dude. And, and yeah, some, exactly. Like, two, oh, my God. It's, like, the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. There's a thing called Hey Ben. It's just, like the most random thing in your lo- you'll ever see but the one that i think i'm talking about is cabo <clears throat> that's the one that i'm thinking of but you got some beer drinking going on we just got some some yeah it's just like the funniest shit is it these guys I'm right here i'll explain it yep that's the, all right, all right. dude the quite quite peeved is hilarious as well they don't they only have like 80 something videos Dude, oh, they got a like year multi, ago. Multi million dollar. Yeah, they haven't posted anything in a long time. All right. The Owen Owen something, I forget his name. He uh he posts all the time. He has some funny story times. I'm he just basically tells stories that he makes up on the spot, like in weird voices. I've never heard of this shit. What the fuck? I'm trying to think of <laughs> his name's something. Me, Owen. me and Steel just keep Olsen. pulling Ruben out of uh, under that rock constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Damn. you'd be surprised at some of the shit. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised at some of the shit that I'd be I'd be looking at on on YouTube. 
It is not for the that faint you, of heart. That YouTube. That YouTube. That. Many times. Dude, I fin- finally started posting. I haven't posted videos for a while, and then, like, I don't know, I finally got around and started uh, throwing yeah, what them do back you, what out there. What have you there. been doing over there, huh? What have you been doing? <laughs> Working, I saw, bro. You bought a fucking scooter today. How's that thing I know, I, you? Dude, I did. What? That thing's pretty legit. <clears throat> I, I ran uh, some couple quick errands on it today just to, like, get my hair in the wind, you know what I mean? Is it a Vespa? Yeah. Was it a Vespa? Yeah, you sent me a video. I'm going to have to post that on the failsafe thing. I know, right? Is it a, is it a Vespa? But, uh, no, no. It's like, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send a picture. I'll post a picture on the, uh, on the uh, Team Failsafe thing. I'll be like a new Team Failsafe scoot or something. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's it's called a laser. Ooh. <laughs> that won't get yeah, you beat it's, up. <laughs> it, it's, a mo- it's actually, it's a moped. You know, like the type that you pedal to start and then it, it gets going? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like old school. Old school moped. Okay, yeah. okay. So Dude, it's, it's pretty cool. It's dope. If you had that in, the, in <clears throat> East Atlanta, you would be the the bee's knees. <laughs> they have that, like, just, is that a big thing out there? They'd be dropping panties My. and like mustaches <laughs> and like tattoos would be falling off people's grills. <laughs> Oh like, shit! Stuff would be going down. That's uh, a yeah. my uh, Dude, what's my cool sister. About this too my is sister-in-law. Like, this is this gets you into like sp- like for me it's perfect because I could get into spots now around here. Rivers. Mm-hmm. I live in Riverside, California. Like I, oh, I don't live out here. My shop's out here. I always say I live. Yeah. I'm at work so much that I feel like I live out here. But uh, it's kind of like a little sketchy area. I mean, it's not like super sketchy, but it, it it's I mean, it's kind of sketchy. Yeah, and. Mm-hmm. uh you know, you can't just leave. Sometimes you feel weird leaving your car somewhere, like you're going to go fly. You're like, oh, that looks like a good spot. <clears throat> I got to leave my car and go walk to it or something. With this thing, I can just mob right up to it and, uh, mob. you know, just, just fly, have everything on my on a backpack, fly, get out of there like, before uh, I get stabbed by any uh Like any those? Or anything. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. With exactly the pedal? Like that. All right. But, uh... But yeah, no, that's what I was. I, I'm just stoked. Uh, I've been able to like make a couple videos and post them up again. I got to get back in the routine of doing that. It was kind of, hmm. kind of slow at doing it, but uh, I think I'm gonna mix it up now. It's not gonna be as much flying in FPV. It's gonna be uh, scooting around the town and you know seeing what I could get into. And you, then, you, you, you gotta know. mount. You gotta mount one of those little side mounts for your camera. Hold yeah. On. Just fuck go. <laughs> so good, dude. So that's good. A, take it to the next level. Uh, every, balloon shop. Everyone's Funniest gonna start shit following him now. Ever seen. <laughs> it's like a really old YouTube channel. I can't. Remember, the guy's name's something o- Olson. <clears throat> we'll see if we. Yeah, oh we'll see if we can get some sound clips from those guys. <laughs> dude, yeah, we need to. We need to step our sound or the soundboard level up to the that, next level. Yeah, we do need the the soundboard thing going for sure. I know we got it somewhere, but. Damn, Daniel. <laughs> Dude, I damn Daniel today for the first time ever. <laughs> Coming in hot with those new lands, Daniel. <laughs> or whatever he says. On, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> damn, Daniel. Oh, yeah, we, we got to get it going, though, for sure. So. Dude, you know what's, cra- you know what's, you know what's crazy about that person? <laughs> a, a complete moron, right? Now it's got like million. She's got like millions of, of Instagram followers. You're like, what? How the fuck? That's that what happen? happens, bro. That's crazy. That's how it goes. Millions. That freak. That freaking. Uh, what is it? It's not Seinfeld. What's that guy's name? Doctor Drew. Doctor Phil. Is that Doctor Phil? No, Doctor Drew is. Yeah, that's Love Line. Never mind. Love Line. No. Doctor <laughs> Kramer. That Kramer. Dr. Phil fame, man. You just get on there one time, dude. Yeah, and done. you're run, running crazy. around being an idiot. We haven't got any complaints about playing that in the beginning and the end because I know it's scared. It got to scare somebody because it's like fucking loud. Somebody's gonna like call pretty loud, and be yeah. like, "Dude, it, it caused a cause my car accident." Okay, <laughs> driving to work and I just swerved off the road. I, I turned it. Ju- I, I turned it up just a little bit so it's like right at that fucking level. You're like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving and I just boinked off a car. <laughs> <laughs> boinked. Just boinked hard. Just boinked. Oh, I just yeah. boinked like eight people in a guardrail. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, so you're gonna come back? Uh, what? You'll be, when are you gonna land? <clears throat> uh, at Thir- land in like Thursday, two days. Uh, sometime on the sixth. <laughs> at some point, so I think I leave at two p.m. I want to say it's like a seven yeah, or Thursday, eight hour, yeah. probably nine hour flight. All right. Well, we'll try. We'll try to get. We'll try to get it. Get it. Get again. Like a recap and everything, and 
we got a. Uh, we got. We'll, we'll try. I'll try to get the soundboard going, and we can go goof off. Dang. We can go hey, goof what's off. What's next? What's next after you get back home? What are you going to be doing? You got something else lined up, still? Uh, yeah, I got a couple of secret plans I'm working on. Uh, uh -oh. Secrets. That secret anymore? Secrets. Rot row. Yeah. Oh, um, Steel's got secrets. I don't know. I want to talk about them, but I don't. Uh, I we got to save them. We got to save them. Steal the beans, Steel. We got to save it. We got to save. All right, I'll save them. I'll save them, but I, I, um, I don't know. I got some really cool stuff, like really cool news. I, I got an email from a really, like, really cool, reputable company recently, Dang. and I hope something pans out with them. Um, and then I have some invite to Japan on the twenty third of August to Damn. like early t to early September, and then I'm supposed to come back to France uh, mid September for like two weeks for this expo thing that's happening out here. And, Holy uh, mackerel. Yeah, it's going to be. And apparently you're going to you're going to hear it all get... about all this all here first, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, make and sure make sure you follow more, uh, we're trying to get some French people to make the Eiffel Tower legitimately happen. So like to dive the Eiffel Tower. So when I go back in September, apparently that's going to be like a potential thing. Oh, like they'll, they'll get the Eiffel they'll, Tower. They'll give you the all clear? That'll be dope. I don't know. That'll be cool. Not like, not like a mob, but you know, yeah, they'll yeah. probably give a couple people to go in for like an hour and just whee! like yeah. Don't even need an hour. Remember how there was? Remember That'd how there was sick. flash mobs where people would like run in a store and grab a bunch of shit and run out and they couldn't do anything. Yeah, you need like thirty five people to mini quads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody just yeah. dives all one, one person survives and gets the footage. <laughs> Dang. And then he posted as in like, I found this SD card on the ground at the base of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah, there's exploded quads everywhere. There's mini quad club parts of shrapnel everywhere. Yeah, basically, and I found everyone's, an SD card. <laughs> everyone's line of sight except for one dude, and he's in the uh, he's in the goggles. So yeah. Everyone has goggles on, and they all just full throttle to the moon, like knowing that they have no chance of recovery, and they all just like free fall to the ground and explode. And this one dude comes in and lands. Oh man, oh, that'd man. be dope. You can land on top. Would, have somebody so catch crazy. it on top. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty fucking tall. Just though, catch dude. my quad when it yeah, gets just to go the top. Out, I'll cut right. throttle, bro. Switch the battery and come back down. <laughs> Dang, that'd be like, where'd it go? And then you just hot like, swap it, it like, huck it off there. Yeah. <laughs> You arm it like ten feet off the ground. I think that's a new thing. Like we should get people to go up on top of buildings, catch the quad, and then huck it back yeah, off. And then no. you have to arm and Pull stop the it the ground. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so somebody, please, if you're listening, somebody please do that, and then that just uh, hashtag it. Team failsafe on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hashtag team failsafe. Oh, yeah. and I got a new a uh, new hashtag that I'm bringing into the the market. Anti posh. <laughs> Hashtag anti posh. A posh is like you know posh people, like they're all no 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 like their monocles and their mustaches, similar to me, except they wear suits and eat fancy food all the time. Is that like posh spice? Um, so so you all proper? Yeah, like proper. <laughs> yeah yeah posh. So posh spice. Uh, someone, hot. Very uh, Stuart, hot. <laughs> Stuart the uh, the Irish dude or Scottish dude. He was like, yeah, it stands for uh, uh, starboard out and what was it? Posh posh. Uh, port out starboard home or something like that which was like something you know, I don't know old timey stuff when people were leaving on ships uh, uh, but I, it didn't make sense to me so I looked it up yeah I don't know what it means but <laughs> anti posh sounds cool um, is the anti <laughs> of posh so I there guess you it, go could just reb rebellious I don't know but yeah if you do anything mini quad uh, that's kind of my gonna be my new hashtag anti posh um, <laughs> Probably get some T-shirts and shit made, you know. Whatever. We need that team failsafe stuff coming in. Yeah. hot. we got some stuff in the. In I the know. Works right now, we got to promote. Yeah, we got to promote stuff. this 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 damn thing. We got to get it out more. Yeah, we got yeah. team failsafe stuff coming down the pipeline. We got some of the podcast like gear coming down the pipeline. We, yeah. what, what else? We yeah, got? just make. Know. There's so just, much stuff we're working. On. I feel like we shouldn't say anything on it yet, but it's like put it. We should put it it's like cool. this. If we're, you're, we're working if on you, some cool stuff. Yeah. If you're listening, make sure you're following us. We have a Facebook. Uh, we have the Instagram. Go ahead and follow there. And uh, we have a, oh, we got a website that we're going to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Once we get some of the right product now. in and everything, we're going to get that website. What else? And just uh, basically splatting it in everybody's face. Yeah. Boom. Well, I mean, 
I mean, like, I guess, what is the download situation with this? Like, I need to know, what is, like, can you download it on iTunes? I know people that are listening to it mm-hmm. obviously figure well, it well, out, but there are a lot of other people that ask questions. We like, can get, how do you download this we'll get a We'll get a Stitcher going. We'll get a Stitcher, so if Android guys can use it. Um, but a lot of guys, whoever listens to a podcast, um, like, I use a podcast catcher. It's like a, it's called Podcast Addicts. And, mm-hmm. uh. How do other people get that, though? It's just an app because, like, like me and Steel, I feel like, like, we're new to the podcast thing. You're, yeah. you're pretty, like, you're a veteran. Well, it. iTunes, like, I can't look at anything iTunes on on my end. So, I, I, I just use the app. I have an Android just because it's the best. <laughs> damn. But I, I, I don't like. Uh, damn Daniel. Damn Daniel. Uh, I don't want to. <laughs> um, so I use that. But a lot of guys will actually just go to the website and they can, you know, do it that. Or if they follow the RSS feed. Um, they can click on it, and if they follow it that way, that's how they bring it up on their, their RSS feed. So there's apps. Mm. Um, we can get another uh, Stitcher going, which is like 4 bucks or something like that. Um, and then uh, what else? You know, the website. They'll be able to do it. They'll be able to yeah. do it. But, but Yeah, and I mean, if you guys like this podcast and you uh, think that your friends would like it, I guess yeah, share it out, man. Yeah. We, we enjoy Wait, doing this stuff. And I love and rate it. Make sure you, if you go to iTunes or any of the other podcasts, make sure you guys rate it and write something funny. If it's if it's funny, you know we'll read it. <laughs> we'll get a we'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> I know some. Dude, of you-, you know what? If you guys have any epic failsafe like DVR or videos or anything, I was talking with Steel about this. Hashtag it, Team Failsafe. Put it on Instagram. And while we're doing this podcast, we'll watch those videos and we'll we'll rate. Yeah, which one is like the most epic just <laughs> explosion of a failsafe? And uh, yeah, we'll I'll make sure I, I send out some goodies to you. Yeah, but uh, cool. we'll we'll pick we'll pick something for sure. Yeah, cool Me. man. Well, thank you guys for listening. I hope it was enjoyable, and we'll see you next week. Oh yeah! All right, everybody. All right, you guys. Later. Boom! That's it for this week. Link up with us next week here on Failsafe Weekly Podcast, where our links are locked in. Like what you're hearing. Make sure to follow us on all the social platforms and subscribe. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you at the next location. Peace.